Hi guys, welcome to Learn Electronics Repair. This is the power supply project that we were working on a week or two ago on part one of this video. This is part two. These are the PCBs that I'm using for this project. So these are made by PCBWay, who also kindly sponsor this video. They produce large and small production runs of PCBs, including prototyping. So a PCB like this, you can upload the Gerber files. You design it using whatever software you wish, or you can download a project if you have the Gerber file. You upload that to PCBWay, and they will make the PCBs. Normally speaking, you can get five of these PCBs, including postage for about nine euros nine dollars yeah you can also choose express delivery which will take four or five days but expect to pay considerably more for the postage standard delivery 10 to 14 days but if you're not in a rush you will get your five pcbs very cheaply we have 10 of the pcbs here so we're actually going to build a few different versions of this power supply one is going to use two or more ATX power supplies because that's probably the cheapest option for people to build a high powered variable power supply with current and voltage adjustment which this has but we're also going to build a linear version using parts I salvaged from an old amplifier this is the one that I've built so far if you look at the schematic this is the schematic and I will link this and the PCB link in the description to this video you'll see this has five output transistors and this can deliver 8 amps continuous 10 amps peak and this original version is 0 to 30 volt okay we're going to build some variations on this the one with the ATX power supply will be either 0 to 24 or 0 to 36 and the one the linear one we're going to build will be 40 volts but only 4.5 amp it's very flexible this design so i've actually built one using one transistor on this heat sink so this can deliver about two amps but that's enough to test it and if we want to have more we just put more of the transistor and resistor in parallel so we can have five if we want to go up to 10 amps i have the shall we call it prototype here this is the one i built first and i have it connected to my bench power supply so i'm going to use my own bench power supply at the moment to put the voltage into this 30 volts and then we can see how well it works and once we get this working as we wish we can then build a complete version using ATX supplies. A really nice feature of this design is that it uses this circuit. We looked at this in part one, but basically this circuit along with this relay is switching the transformer coils. So when your output voltage is less than 15 volts, it just uses one of the transformer windings so you have 15 volts coming in to your output transistors and if say you have two volts going out across the transistors it's 13 volts at 10 amps that is about 130 watts of power dissipation because your transistors and your bench supply dissipate the highest wattage when you have the highest input supply and the lowest output now if we were using a 30 volt transformer you would have 30 volts coming in and say one or two volts going out and that would give you at 10 amps 280 290 watts which is a lot more power to dissipate you'll generate a lot more heat so what this does quite cleverly it measures the output voltage and setting this little potentiometer you can set it so that when the voltage gets close to 15 it switches this relay and connects the full 30 volts coming in. So at the point, for example, you've got 14 volts coming out. This will now switch from 15 to 30. You still have 16 volts across here. And at 10 amps, you're dissipating about 160 watts, not almost 300 watts. So that's the whole idea of this circuit. I will modify this. I'm going to try 
to do this using ATX power supplies instead of using the relay. We're going to try to actually switch the power supplies out of standby as we need them. So we can have two or three of them all in series. And we can modify this with an extra op amp. We'll perhaps use a dual op amp. So I can switch the ATX to give me 12 volt, 24 or 36 at 10 amps. So that's what we're going to try and do with it, okay? Let's try the one that we built. I've connected a light bulb here. This is a 12 volt, 21 watt. So that's going to draw a bit less than two amps. If it was 24 watts, that would be two amps. So it's a bit less than that. Which would be fine for this transistor, I would think. This is the relay. So on the red wire, we need to put 15 volts in. And on the purple wire, we need to put 30 volts in. And then we can switch between them. Or rather, the circuit will switch between them as we alter the output voltage, which is with the potentiometers. There's a fine adjust and there is the coarse adjust. So I'll just put a little bit of voltage on those. The current limit, I'll just set it towards the middle somewhere. And we'll switch on the bench supply. I don't have it connected at the moment to the circuit board, but let's see what we have. So this is a dual bench power supply. I have it in series mode, so this is 15 volts and this is 15 volts. You see I can alter both voltages together. It's in series mode. So the black wire is ground, the red is 15 volts and the yellow one is 30 volts. Let's connect that to our power supply. So the red lead coming in goes to the red lead to the relay. That's the 15 volt supply. The yellow lead coming in goes to the purple wire, which is the 30 volts. Black is on ground, so we have that connected up. So let's switch this on now. Because I have the voltage set quite low, I'm expecting only the 15 volts to be supplying power to this and not this one. And we should see the difference on the ammeters. Let's see what we get. Well, the bulb's on, and yes, we have 1.3 amps on this one and zero on this one. And let's see if we can adjust it. So yeah, we can adjust that. We can adjust the voltage. Okay, so if we turn the voltage up, we should see this relay. We may hear it switch. And we should see this supply start to deliver power. Let's have a look. Well, in actual fact, it didn't. Let's go again. No, so it doesn't seem to be switching the relay for some reason, okay? So we need to have a look around the op amp that's switching that and the drive to the relay to see if we have any problems. I'll just put that low so it's not too bright in our face, so to speak, okay? Let's see what output voltage we have. Volts range. I'll clip a crocodile clip onto the black lead so I have a ground. Okay, and we can see what voltage we have coming in. So the in is here. And we have about 15 volts, okay? Let's turn this up. Well, that is not switching. I'm expecting this relay to switch. I think one end of the relay is ground, this end. It's supposed to be zero. What's on the other end of the relay? That's the green wire. That's here. Okay. The relay isn't switching, so we need to have a look to see why that is. I'll just see if the transistor is getting warm, the main output transistor. I'll use the thermometer, this one. So we'll just point it at the transistor. Yeah, it's about 30 degrees, so it's not very warm. We turn this up. Doesn't really change in any. Turn this down. Isn't really changing anything. So it's not getting hot. It's possible that we have this bypass adjustment set wrong. So what I'll do is I'll increase the output voltage to about 12 volts. Just put the uh, meter on out. There. Five. So at this point, really, it should switch. Yeah, let's go to about 11, okay? I'll put something over that so it doesn't blind us with the glare. That'll do. Just something to keep it out of our eyes, yeah? But we can still see the brightness change if we want to. So the adjustment for the switching is this one. 
Let's just adjust it a little bit and see what happens. I'll measure the input voltage. 14.6. Right, let's see what it does. I'm not sure what the end of the scale it's set to at the moment. It's not have any effect. Okay. Let's go the other way. Well, that should be switching at some point. Okay. Let's see how this actually is working. So, this is the adjustment, and this alters the voltage on pin 2 yeah that's the output voltage that comes to pin 2 so the voltage on pin 2 should be adjusting as we adjust this voltage divider let's have a look so this is pin 2 of our op amp it has 2.5 volts on it so it's definitely adjusting yeah You can see that's adjusting. Now, it will be comparing that voltage with the one on pin 3. Okay, which looks like it goes through this resistor divider. What's on pin 3? Well, that's 4.6 on. So we need to get this one. Pin 2 to 4.6 and it should switch. Okay, let's have a look. Well, the, the op amp should switch now and it should switch the input voltage. Okay, it's not doing. So the op amp basically drives through a zener diode here. Let's see what's happening on pin 6. So this is pin 6 of our chip. Well, that's 2 volts, yeah. Let's turn this back down to a bit below 4.6. Okay, we're a bit below now. Go back to pin 6, which is the output. Okay, 2.05. Now let's turn this back up again. Well, it looks like the op amp isn't working. Uh, yeah, it's definitely going more above now. So, pin 6 on this should be switching. Ah, oh, it is. It works. wonder why that worked now. Look, it's worked. Okay, we have 29 volts coming in. We reduce the output voltage. Yeah, Luke has gone back to 15. Back to 29. So it's switching. What's on the output? 12. This is 15. Switching there. That's 29. And that's 14. So we actually want it to switch a little bit lower. We want it to switch when this is less than 12. Somewhere here, yeah? That's good enough. 15 volts coming in. So we want it to switch now. So this is at 4.68. This is at 4.43, so you need to turn it up a little bit. Yeah. There. So what do we have? The, what you can hear rattling is actually in my bench power supply. So with 
ten and a half volts going out. We have thirty coming in, and then it drops down. Okay. So we have it working. Now, how about the current limit? Well, if we turn the current limit down, the output voltage should drop. And the current limit's actually not doing anything. I'm just adjusting it from one end to the other. Okay. But I think I know why. I think I know what I'm doing wrong here. You'll notice I don't have the current limit LED connected. And if we look where that is in the circuit, which is here, this output pin 10 is the output from this chip. We'll look at the data sheet in a minute. And it goes through the LED into this resistor divider. And this is what switches the current limit on, on this one. So we have an output on pin 10 here, and we have an input on pin 2 here. And we also were using pins 5 and 6, okay? We have a voltage divider here through the adjustment pot. These are minimum and maximum. So effectively it sets the minimum and maximum current. At the moment I've just set these so they're both zero. So we're just using this potentiometer from one end to the other, okay? So you'll see pin five and pin six. This is the current measurement. Look, if you look where it comes from, it comes from this rail. And this is the current sensing resistors, okay? This is where you connect your load to ground, but this is not really ground, that is ground. So what's happening is this chip, if we look where the wire goes, is monitoring the voltage drop on the current sense resistor on pin five, if you like, and it also has pin six. And this one will be a reference set by this lot. Very similar to how this was with. But what I have done, or not done, is fitted the LED, and that's why it's not working. So let's put the LED in. So we have learned that removing the LED not only stops the LED from working, but it actually also disables the current limit. If we ever want to, for any reason to disable that, if we remove this LED, it will be disabled. Okay, that's our current sensing LED. Let's switch it back on again. Well, in fact, we can see the current limit is on and the light bulb has gone out. So just the current. And it's still not working. So no matter how I adjust the potentiometer, the current sensor is still on. It's in current limit. Let's have a look at the data sheet. And here it is. So this is effectively a functional schematic of it. We have basically an amplifier, like an op amp. This is measuring, if you like, the output voltage and the reference voltage, and it's driving this transistor. You can see that's the voltage coming in, VO voltage out, and the voltage on the base will depend on the difference between these two voltages and that's what drives the transistor to set the output voltage. We have this current sense and current limit, so you can see this is effectively an NPN transistor inside the chip. And if we turn this transistor on, we will short this base to effectively near enough ground, the current sense, very low resistance, and turn it off. So if current limit is about 0.6 volts more than current sense, that will turn the transistor off. Now we have two of these chips. So the one that's generating the voltage, pin two, is being driven by pin 10 on the one that's sensing the current. So the current sensor then, we have pins, so we were using five and four. That's the two that we're using. One is effectively from the potentiometer that sets the current limiter. The other one is from the current limit sense resistor, and pin 6 is a reference voltage. Depending on what's happening on pins 4 and 5, as one goes higher than the other one, the output here will go high, okay? And that's how it basically works. This output going high takes current limit high on the other chip, and that's what switches the output voltage off. So that's how they're doing this. 
the reference voltage oh here we are v ref so the reference is typically 7.15 volts it could be 6.95 to 7.35 so that's the typical reference voltage so we should be able to look on pin 6 and find 7.15 volts and then looking on pins 5 and 4 we can effectively work out what should be happening on pin 10 the output okay let's go back to the schematic so here is our schematic again. I'll just move that out of the way. Right, let's see what do we have. Pin six, this is a current sensing chip, okay? Pin six is 7.1 volts or there, but that's the voltage reference. And that voltage comes into one end of our potentiometer. So by adjusting this pot, we can select a voltage between whatever's on this point and whatever's on this point. This one effectively goes down to ground through the trimmer pot. The voltage here is not going to be 7.1 because we have 820 ohms here. And from this point to ground, we have 100 plus whatever set on this one. So if this is set to 100 as well, we have about 200 there, about 800 here. So roughly four fifths of the voltage will be across this and one fifth across here and one fifth of seven is about what 1.2 1.3 something like that so that's what we should expect to find here okay and the voltage here should vary from about 1.3 to somewhere near to zero and we expect the voltage on here to be somewhere between zero and 1.3 so as this goes past that point it switches the output on or off okay let's have a look to see what we have so pin Six, so pin 6 is the reference 7 volts 7.07 .07. so that voltage through the 820 ohm resistor that one should put a voltage on the end of this pot about 0.7 sorry about 1.3 we thought okay so what's on our pot on pin well it's one end of it 0.6 I mean, it varies a little bit but, bit, but it never goes very high, okay? What's on pin 5? We're expecting about somewhere between 0.7 and, yeah, 0.89. So the idea is that this pin, the output of the pot, should go higher or lower than 0.89, depending on the position of it, okay? And that's the current limit, and it's not changing. Ah, this is the end. I have the wrong end. This is the ground end. So let's look again. So we now know that the reference voltage on pin 6, 7, puts a voltage on here. Yes, about 1.3. That's what I figured out the four fifths were. So that's the 1.3 volts. And that should go to the wiper, but it doesn't. As we turn the wiper down, in fact, what actually happens is, I think, it goes away like we're shorting out. The reference voltage is we're short from this wiper, this potentiometer to ground. Let's have a look. That's the only thing that makes sense that basically when we adjust this over, if there's a short at this end, when we move it to that end, we should see because this is a 50k, no, it's a 5k pot. But we should see, yeah, about 1.3 volts on here, roughly a fifth of the, the seven. That's what I guessed it was. When we switch it to this end, this is going to zero and it must be shorted here somewhere. I bet it's shorted this side of the resistor because otherwise, with a 1k there, it probably wouldn't go to zero. Let's have a look. I'm pretty confident we do have a short here, guys. Okay. Ohm's range. So we're looking, I have the clip on ground, we're looking from here. Oh, yeah, look, we have a short. And effectively, when we adjust this over, it shorts this end, which is why the voltage was going away. So we have a short from here to ground. Well, there's the 1K pot. It must be on this end. It must be this capacitor or just a, a bridged track or something. So this is the one microfarad, okay? Let's have a look. 
Well, the one K resistor is there, and the one microfarad capacitor is here. Okay, that looks to be where it is. Let's have a look. So, this end is reading about 1K to ground. This end must be shorted to ground. Yeah, is it the capacitors? It's, it certainly is. So, what's wrong with this is that these capacitors, the 2.47s in parallel, are short. Yeah, that's what's wrong with it. Let's change them. Okay, let's just check them as well. So these are the ones I actually removed. Do we have a short? Let's see. Yes, we do. And these are the new ones. Let's just make sure these are okay. No, they're also short. So we have a problem with these capacitors. I don't know why. There's something strange about them. Let me just get one out that I haven't soldered. I have a whole bag full of these. What are these capacitors? I mean... Are they something else that I thought were capacitors at some point? I don't know. They seem to be short anyway. Let's try something else. Well, let's just have a quick look at these, uh, what I thought were capacitors. I mean, they've been in there for a long time, so I don't quite know why I thought these were 0.47 microfarad. One side says WGP. Mexico. Uh, and the other one says zero zero X zero one zero or X zero one C maybe. Uh, that's what they say on them. So I don't know. Obviously not what I thought they were. I have to say they've been in there for years probably. So these things read 16 ohms. There must be some sort of inductor, I guess. I think I know somebody who will know, and it's you guys, yeah. What are these things? Because the ain't capacitors, and I thought, for some reason, they were just in the drawer where those capacitors go, and that's what I thought they were. Okay, mystery solved, possibly. Let's continue. According to the schematic, this is not a... The electrolytic, it says MKM. I'm not exactly sure why they're using that type of capacitor, but they must be using it for some reason. I could, I think, put an electrolytic in here because this end of the wiper is always going to be positive with respect to that end, and I don't have any other small one microfarad or 2.47s in parallel to put in it. So let's put a one microfarad electrolytic in and let's see if we can figure out why they're using this MKM one. Maybe it's something to do with leakage, like the electrolytics have a higher leakage current maybe, but let's see. So here's a one microfarad 50 volt electrolytic. It will fit nicely. We know which way the polarity would be anyway. Let's just make sure we're not cracking up here and that this doesn't actually be short. No, it doesn't read short. Sure. That's good news. Let's get the capacitance meter and just check it. I've actually ordered a few weeks ago now some of those capacitors anyway. Yeah, this reads one. It's fine. So I have ordered some of those MKM ones. Hopefully they are all working and not short like the bag for I seem to have, which are actually new ones. Let's see which end of this is actually ground. One end goes to ground. And that'll be the negative end of the capacitor, not that end. This end, so this is the negative end. We'll put this in and then let's see if our circuit actually works. Okay, we can give it a go then. Let's power it back up. Well, the light bulb's on now. 
but the current limit still doesn't seem to work. Okay. Well, the current limit light is actually out now, so there is no, it's not limiting. Yeah, it's doing something different, it's not limiting. Let's have a look around this chip again. So, once again, pin 6, reference. About 7 volts, okay? On the wiper, 1. Going to 1.3, okay? This is fell on the floor, by the way, and got bent. That's what's happened to it. What's on pin 5? So, pin 5 is a current sense. 1. Okay? Four. Well, strangely enough, this is varying, yeah? This is varying. Oh, pin four is varying, but not very much. It's now above 0 0.06, 1.00, so it's now above the other one, but it won't go below it, okay? Maybe this is a range thing. I'm going to adjust these potentiometers again. See what happens with the voltage while I'm doing it. Pin four. So it's adjusting downwards. Ah, there's the current limit, yeah. So it is limiting the current. Turn this down a little bit more. Yeah, there we go, there we go. So our current limit is also working. So we now actually have a usable power supply. We can actually have a look on the bench power supply and see what the current's actually doing. So That's increasing the current, so we have now 1.66 amps, okay. And we can get it down to about 0.5. Let's adjust the minimal. So that's this one. Should we be able to get it? Yeah, look, oh, there we go. So we can turn the minimum down, so it effectively we go down to zero. And up to 1.6, okay the maximum being set by the load. So that is working really nicely now. I'm very happy with that currently meeting setting. So I think we can go on to the next stage of this project. So that will be to look at connecting the two ATX power supplies in series. At first we'll just use this relay to switch it and if it's working okay then we'll look at modifying this we'll make our own pcbs that can control the atx power supplies by using the power supply on the green wire basically and just switch the second one on when we need more voltage into this okay hope you enjoyed that these projects don't always work first time but we've used some interesting diagnosis techniques and this is starting to look like a very very good power supply project okay guys I'll see you all soon on the next one. Ciao for now.